Inside here is a saw blade inside this tubular webbing. And we're going to put that on and that will come into play a little later when we build a buck saw for procuring all and harvesting all the wood that we require to spend the night in a shelter without sleeping bag just in your clothing relying on fire to make up your clothing or your deficit. Yeah so the the reason for coming in with the uh, the saw belt wrapped around or the, the saw blade wrapped around your belt and a couple of nuts in this case bolts and some paracord is so that you can put together a buck saw so this would come out of the belt and we stick it in there and using uh, spruce this is spruce branches that are peeled and, and uh, carved in such a fashion that you can put together a really good uh, buck saw enough that you can get quite a depth of log so you can cut in and before it starts to hit there you can cut a good sized log which is important for this this kind of winter shelter you need to be able to topple the biggest trees that you can to generate the biggest fire otherwise you spend your whole night wandering around collecting wrist thick wood and and your sleep is so difficult because you're always up gathering small wood and by bringing the saw blade in, building a buck saw such as this, you're able to then harvest with a, a minimal effort a very large amount of wood, large trees, uh, large wood such as this. And you can readily see that building a fire, which I'll have later, out of logs like that, because you have a saw, compared to wandering around without a saw and collecting wood like this and breaking it, the fire that you'll generate from that is, is quite considerable, so very useful skill to get and build a buck saw. And if you don't know how to build it, then you have to bring one with you. If you do know how to build it, then you can just bring the blade. And should you need it, pull out the blade, put yourself, put together a buck saw. So if you found yourself falling through the ice and you needed a fast, big warming fire, you can make a twig bundle out of, in this case, dead branches from a spruce tree. And what we basically have here, uh, the makers of matches, they know that a flame will hold on to a match very, very nicely when it happens to be this size the size of a match stick. The flame will very readily travel down the length of this size of a stick quite nicely. Whereas if you tried to light a stick, say for example, that size and have a flame burn down that, that stick, the physics of it doesn't allow it to work that way. A match stick, however, does. So if you can acquire for a quick warming fire a few thousand matchsticks, chances are you'll be in good shape. And the reason for the bundle like this is you could light it out of the wind or uh, you know for some circumstance if you don't want to light it on the ground you can get it up off the ground and keep the bundle in nice and tight. So we'll look for some nice small type branches like that. Fire up our match. We got old matches. That's what we're dealing with here. Matches, as they age, they tend to wear out. So 
What I'm going to do to up my odds is I'm going to take two. If I can get it out of there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Guess I should have bought nice clean matches when I first went. Lots of little match sticks in there. They just want to climb from one stick to another in such a fashion that it catches very quickly. And with that bundle then you can manipulate it and turn it. So if you really need to, you can drive air into it rather than having to get down on your knees in the cold and blow you can drive the air into it oh just about put it out there it will reach a point though where it's self-sustaining and no matter what you do you won't put it out so as you can see you can warm somebody up in a real hurry in a matter of minutes with thousands of matches you'll have flames as high as your head within seconds of lighting it. And now we'll just start adding wood about the size of my finger or thumb. And you notice I built it on the logs already. A lot of people wouldn't do that but you think of it. All the coals will drop down on the logs. The logs will then in turn catch on fire. And you're not dealing with coals melting in the snow, you get a hot bed of coals right quickly. Rather than dealing with all the melting snow that your fire is trying to get going on. So we now have our shelter pretty much beat. We do have white wood laying around that's been sawed up. And we're going to move towards getting some uh, water cooking so that I can rehydrate. The fire will be as long as I am tall or almost so when it gets into the night to sleep beside it. It will be the full length of my body to keep me warm from head to toe. Large log. But for right now, we'll keep the fire concentrated here so that we can get a pot of water cooking. All right, so just coming up on the, the fire, we want to have a look at the way the fire is arranged here for the shelter. We'll get down nice and low and look. Basically what we have here is nice long logs. So when I went with the saw and I cut these logs, good sized thick logs, I cut them almost as long as my body. Almost the entire length of my body. So these ones right here are probably four to five feet long or a meter and a half long. And as you can see, what I'm striving to do is just keep the spaces correct to produce a long, consistent fire. And right now it's doing it beautifully. So we've got a nice space right here in between these two big logs, a nice space in between these two logs, and it's just the right combination of air and fuel and oxygen to allow this long ribbon-like flame to peak up between the logs. And this second long ribbon-like flame <clears throat> to peak up through the logs. Now this is ideal, of course. Uh, it keeps you warm then from right here, from the head, all the way to the, the bottom and to the toe, and it warms your whole shelter from end to end. It is ideal, but of course the wood will burn up. And as it burns up, you need to add more. So right here uh, where I'm standing is 
more logs, a good lot of logs here. I've got a fairly generous big pile and I've got a mixture of wet wood and dry wood. And as the wet fire goes down, basically you get cold. As you get cold, you have to wake yourself from whatever depth of sleep you're in. And you have to roll out even though you don't often feel like it. But the cold will drive you out. And you have to get up, walk over, grab another log, maybe two, and lay them down again and get this parallel fire arrangement happening yet again. The bigger the log, the longer the burn. That's why the saw is so important in this type of uh, outdoor experience, in the bushcraft experience. If I didn't have the saw, there's no way I could get logs this size cut. There's no way I could break them into sizable chunks. There's no way I could haul them over here to my shelter. It'd be an entirely different deal and I'd spend a lot of time waking up in the night restoking with small wood. But with that one tool, that saw, suddenly life is good and I can cut up large logs. Even bigger would be better. It just doesn't offer anything much larger in this particular forest right here. Uh, I did see a few. It might be worthy go worthwhile going after them. So with a saw or even an axe, you can go after those big, big logs. Three giant logs that are hug size. If you can imagine such a great big log, it is worth the effort to pile them there because the trade-off is, or the benefit is, you'll get a good, well, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, maybe even three hours in a good situation of sleep while those big logs burn in this type of fashion. And that is only available to you when you have the big saw or the saw to, to procure that kind of wood. Uh, the downside, if you don't have the saw, then you're going to have a small fire. You're going to burn up lots of little tiny wrist thick sized wood and you're going to eat through that wood so quickly so fast you're going to be up every 40 minutes maybe even every 30 minutes believe me i know i've done it at 30 35 37 below and it consumes wood in a hurry in order to stay warm so in my way of thinking the saw has a great benefit to uh to the person in the in this type of uh, outdoor experience.